there we go and you're on live and recording so basically you're in this general area okay okay there All we right. go alrighty we'll do a general yeah. mic test then yeah. then we'll cue you yeah um, we're how long um, um 25 25 okay mm -hmm. We are about to do our podcast on Answers Unleashed. So we both have, we have two cameras rolling. We have the camera for today and we have the great uh, Facebook Live. So we're about to go live with our, our podcast. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, perfect. We sound great. Oh, yeah. There we go. I was like, oh, got it perfect. Okay. I'll get myself in and cue you in. Welcome to Answers Unleashed, a talk show to help you reshape your brain with science and faith so you find the answers in front of you. I am your host, Olympia LaPointe. I, I, I love doing the show. This is season six of our Answers Unleashed show. We have been on for six seasons now. This is our second episode. The last two uh, Tuesdays, I was out giving a talk over in Texas at the Petroleum Museum. So shout out to the Petroleum Museum for where I shared my tree brain theory of relativity. And if you are new to this show, if you are tuning in for the first time, you will know what this show is about. It is about changing your thoughts so you reshape your brain. And when you reshape your brain, you unleash the power of your life. And I am your host, Olympia LaPointe. And I've had to do that in my own life. I've had to do that so many different, in so many different areas of my life. And if you know my background, I was a rocket scientist for nearly 10 years. But I went through hell and back just to get there. What I do now is, since leaving the world of rocket science, I help you reshape your brain with science and faith so you find the answers in front of you and you can cope and handle certain situations and get your answers. Today's episode. Today's episode is really, really telling. It is how to... And, and I, I love this. It is how to remove the shame from sexual abuse or sexual assault. And this is a powerful but yet fun, I'm going to make it fun, fun episode because we have been seeing such information on the media lately, especially in the United States. And if you've, if you've been in a cave and you don't know what's been happening... <laughs> We've had a major controversy. There is a person that is up for uh, the Supreme Court nomination, and he has been accused of sexual assault. People don't know if he's telling the truth or not. There's the woman that's come forth to tell her story, and several people, friends of them, telling their stories. You don't know who to believe. And that's not our place to figure that out. That's actually the place of all the professionals who can actually figure out the truth in that situation. That's where the court of law and, and all that resides. But the, this is the fact. There were so many people across the world, and especially here in the United States, that was looking at that situation with Brett Kavanaugh and Dr. Christine Ford and thinking they were reliving their own situation. You were having so many people re-traumatized by hidden memories that they had because they were either placing themselves in the shoes of Brett Kavanaugh or they were placing themselves in the shoes as Dr. Christine Ford. And because of it, you saw so many people across the United States come up and be in emotional turmoil because they were taking in the energy from the situation, thinking it was theirs. And I want to tell you something, no matter what you have gone through, you always have the ability to heal and reconnect your brain and your mind in doing so. So today we have specifically six different steps six different steps for someone to to overcome the shame that is experienced within sexual abuse or even the accusation 
of sexual abuse. And there's a lot of people out there. Uh, there and I just want to touch upon this really quickly. This show isn't about who's right or wrong. This show is about helping heal the people who have been hurt in the situation when it has happened. That, that I want to make this very, very clear out there for you and everyone who's watching it. This show is about for the people who authentically went through a very traumatic situation. How do you heal in all this situation here? And one of my first things is going to say this, and this is the first tip. It's not your fault. If you have gone through type of sexual abuse, sexual or, or even a, a sexual abuse allegation, <laughs> it is not your fault. Number one. See, what we all have a tendency of doing is that we all have a tendency of thinking we are someone else. So if you are really relating to Dr. Christine Ford and thinking, oh my gosh, I've been through that. I, 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 I don't know what she's going through. Stop it. You are not her. Your life has different circumstances, different situations. You are not her. You do not live her life. She has a certain things that she has to overcome in her life. That's what we call what in, in Eastern philosophies, their own karma. You have your own details to go through. You have your own life. Your experiences from the past is unique to you. No one else, but you may have gone through it and other people may have gone through similar, but it was not the same. Number two, if you're experiencing remorse and, and you're, if you're experiencing uh, anger and, and rage towards what's going on, stop. Whatever is going on right now, what you see is not your life specifically. What that is triggering is your ability to change the things in your own life, in your own past, in your own memories to make things right. And if you are thinking that you are in the same place as uh, Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Now, who knows if he's telling the truth or not? That's not up for us to figure that out. That's up for professionals to figure that out. But if you are have been in a situation where someone has falsely accused you, stop it. You are not Brett Kavanaugh. You're not him. You have your own life. You have your own set of circumstances. And for you to become regrounded in your own life is for you to recognize that it is not your fault. It is not your fault. When we think that we are in someone else's life and someone else's pain is our pain, we are subconsciously thinking that something is because it is our fault. And it's not. Do you know that... Uh, this this situation is more common that you, than you know. Do you know, according to the Center of Disease Control, that one out of four women have been sexually raped or assaulted in their lifetime? One out of four. So on average, this is what statistics tells us. If we were to grab four people, on average, one of them will say that they've gone through some terrible memory that had to do with a sexual type of rape or, or, or type of assault or some type of sexual instance that changed them in some degree or another. And if you think it's only with, with women, think again. There are unreported sexual assault cases that happen with men too. Actually, one out of 20 men have been sexually assaulted or raped. And it's probably even worse with coming forward for that information because people, when men especially, and this is my theory, men, if they've ever been in a situation like that, there's a stigma thinking, oh, you're, something's wrong with you sexually if you've been ever through that. Bull, bull, bull. There are so many people, men and women, who have been violated and they are thinking it is their fault. Now, they don't say it out loud, but that's what they may be thinking. And I know this for a fact because I had that happen in my own life. I was eight years old and there was a friend of the family who made himself known and was trusted. And at eight years old, I was sexually abused. Yeah, you heard that right. And he was a trusted person. And there was no report filed. I'm not even sure if he's still even in the country. Because at eight years old, it was, for me, it was going to be more difficult for me to come forward with the truth, with the ramifications of the truth 
than it would for me to have been silent. So I can understand when men do not say anything about abuse, when women do not say anything about abuse, because the amount of shame that comes up in those type of situations can be crippling for someone. And that shame, if, if someone doesn't realize that it's not their fault, they're going to be holding on to that shame and it's going to be changing them. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in detail. You have to realize one thing. If you've ever gone through a sexual uh, assault or, or rape or, or anything difficult, know that you're not alone. And know that there are many people who have gone through the same thing. Just, just know for a fact you are not alone. And it is when you realize that you still, no matter what, have the power and control over your own sexuality is when you start to become understanding that it's not your fault. There's no reason why, there's no reason that would cause sexual abuse. There's no reason why someone would go through this. It's not what you wear. It's not what you say. It is not, well, if you say no, that's like really important. But I mean, it's not what you, you know, you people think, oh, if it's what someone's wore, or she was drinking and everything else. Like that. No, no. You, no matter what, at all points and times of your life, no matter what, have the ability to control and give your sexuality appropriately. That's the responsibility of an adult. That's just a natural biological function. And if any woman or man has been assaulted before, know from this moment on that you always have the ability to say yay or nay. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. You can reclaim your power back right now. And I say that from an experience because <laughs> I had to go through it too. And I smile because as I worked through all of this myself, it freed me. It gave me a freedom. And I'm sharing with you what I have learned. And the second thing specifically I've learned is you have to remove the shame from the situation. You have to remove the shame from the situation. Now, uh, the first time I ever recognized that something happened with me was when I was going through physical therapy. And I remember laying on one side of the table and when I laid on one side of the table, a flashback came from when all that happened when I was eight years old. Now, I literally pushed it to the back of my mind so I wouldn't remember it. And at that moment in time, everything came forward. I didn't know how to process it until a couple of days later where I bust down crying at church. I just cry cried at church on the ground at church for probably like two or three hours just trying to make sense of everything when the the parts of the memory came back. Not all of it, but just the parts that came back. And I thought, why? And honestly, just honestly, for me, I thought, why did God allow that? that? That's what I thought. Honestly, that's what I thought. Why did God allow something like that to happen? And the truth is that the shame from the situation for so many years crippled me. It, it changed my digestion. It, it allowed, it, it didn't, and I didn't even know what was going on. It changed my digestion. It didn't even make me feel safe being out with this male friend sometimes. I had to work for years to understand what was going on. And when that image came back, that's when I finally had the strength, the mental strength to start dealing with it. So if you're watching anything on the news, if you're going through any type of situation and it is hitting you, that is because you finally have the mental strength to start removing the shame from the situation. That's what it's telling you. And the, what it's also telling you is that you have the ability to start taking that shame and reforming it in your memory so it can bring you faith. And I'm going to describe that a little bit more. In my case, what I did is I started writing about it. And when I started writing about it, it ended up being in, oh, and it started, it is in my second book, Answers Unleashed. And I truly remember talking with my editor thinking, oh my God, I wonder if I should put this in there. Oh my God, it's something personal. She goes, well, how else will you be able to touch people who have gone through the same thing? That's what she said. And that was the first 
that epiphany moment where I thought, whoa, I, my story can help people. See, your story can help people too, but you have to be able to see the blessing in your story to see it. See, the blessing in my story is that I was able to go into science afterwards. I literally stopped the emotional part of myself and started the logical part of myself. And I ended up going into science and having a career in science because <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I didn't know how to process emotions after that. So the blessing in disguise was I went into science and I love science and became a, a scientist because of it. Every single type of situation has a beneficial thing to it. And so when I shared this in my book and then when I finally had the courage to share it in front of an audience, it was at California State University Northridge during the Answers Unleashed Live lectures where I shared what happened to me verbally. In the process of speaking up and out, the shame no longer had a power on me. So I highly encourage anyone who's gone through a situation that is being really affected by all of this, I, I just urge you to share your own personal story in recognizing that there is no shame involved. And I want to break down what shame does in the brain. There is a scientist, uh, his name is Dr. David Hawkins, and he created the map of consciousness. And this map of consciousness identifies emotions and, and on a scale of one to ten, one, well, actually one to ten, one to a thousand, where a thousand would be complete spiritual awareness where someone is completely aligned in their brain, mind, body, and soul to be able to walk in alignment of their life purpose. And the very top pinnacle of all of that is someone who scores like an 800 or a thousand. They're like, they're like almost like Jesus. <laughs> and then the people that are like completely the opposite are, are people who hide and the people who are not uh, straightforward. But he was able to see that as someone moves in their spiritual consciousness, it doesn't matter what religion you experience or anything else, but moving in your spiritual consciousness, knowing what it is that you are designed to do on this earth, you bring forth a power to you. This power uh, is described through the map of consciousness. And the exact opposite of your power, exact opposite of your faith is shame. So the more shame you experience in life, the more removed you are from your life purpose. So the, tr the question is, how do you remove your shame? I mean, what, what do you do? How do you go about doing that? And this brings us to the next uh, tip that I offer. It's to turn back your natural intuition on. See, what happens in any type of violation or, or type of situation that you feel shame, you turn off the, the spiritual side of you. And I, in my book, Answers and Leash, I talk about the spiritual side and it is called intuition. Each one of us has it. It is what I believe in the tree of brain theory of relativity that I introduce in my book. It's our natural communication with God to guide us to where we need to go in life to fulfill what it is that we are uniquely supposed to do here on this earth. Like what I'm supposed to do is not what you're supposed to do. What someone else is supposed to do is not what someone else is supposed to do because we each are uniquely created with our own DNA. We have unique experiences. There's no two people on the face of this planet who have experienced the same thing because no two people can be in the same space and time continuum exactly. And that's per Einstein's theory. So we each have our abilities. So the question is, what have you turned off in your intuition after a traumatic event? So if you were sexually assaulted, it, there was something at that moment in time before, like shortly before that moment in time, where something came to you and it was warning you, uh, maybe don't do that or maybe don't go in that room or maybe don't go to that party or do, there's something always in our life to warn us. Uh, this is a specific story uh, from myself. Intuition can always help you. And I remember being in my 20s. And I remember going to a, uh, it was an event in Las Vegas and I had a friend with me at the time and my friend went back to the hotel. 
and I stayed at the social gathering. And the strangest thing had happened earlier that day. It was like a maybe like a three hours before the event. I was taking a shower and my intuition went off. Some people call it being intuitive. I call it being very aware. There, I was taking a shower and this man's face just popped up in front of me and I had no idea who this person was. And I was like, I, who is this person? Why am I seeing this person? I have no idea who this person is. Lo and behold, at this party that I go to later on uh, in the evening in Las Vegas, I see the same person that I had a vision of. Now, that is really freaky. That sounds really strange. And that happens to a lot of people. If you ask them about some strange things that happen with their intuition, you'll be surprised. People have a lot of different stories that come up. But it's important that you listen to that. So I noticed that type of situation that happened in my own life. When my friend went back to the hotel, I stayed there and I had a drink in my hand. And I remember thinking, all right, I have saw this man's face before. Why did I see this man's face? I, I, this is probably telling me I should be very aware at this moment in time. And this is how the intuition worked in my own life. I chose to be very aware, meaning not to drink. I, if I go anywhere, I actually drink uh, water. I don't even drink alcohol. But, I mean, if I go someplace, I have water. I see a person place something in my drink and I am turning my head and I'm seeing it out of the corner of my eye. I'm holding my glass. And then I realized, oh my God, that's the reason why I had that vision. It was for me not, it was for me to pay attention and for me to put down that drink. So immediately I said, oh, excuse me, I need to go to the bathroom. And I went and I poured that drink down the drain and I completely got away from those people and just completely mingled with other people and went home and was so thankful that I listened to my intuition. Whatever you have been through, it's time for you to turn back on your intuition. You can trust yourself. From this moment in time, I want you to recognize that you can now begin to trust yourself. You can now begin to trust your intuition and you now can begin to trust what your intuition will do to lead you to full healing from the past. All right. Now, after you've turned back on your intuition, here's the fourth tip. You have to seek out therapy. You really do. And it's to verbally get it out of your system. It wasn't until, for, it wasn't until I actually was on stage talking to people right in front of me. It wasn't on a radio show. It wasn't in a book, but it was people right in front of me where I was like, Bam! This is what happened. And do you know what? I'm okay after it because I've learned the power of healing. It wasn't until that moment that I began to reclaim freedom in my life. If you are in any or have experienced any type of situation of false accusations or you have been in a sexual encounter that was not approved of by your means, it's time to actually go to someone and professionally speak about it. It is probably the most healthiest things for you to ever do. Now, if you don't have money, that's great. There's all sorts of organizations that deal with that. If you're on a college campus and you're enrolled in a college campus, every single counseling center on the college campus is aware of how to handle uh, rape victims in that type of situation. You, you have the option to go to cognitive behavioral therapy. And if any of you, have any of you watched Friends, the TV show Friends? You know David Schwimmer? He's like the, he's like the funny guy, right? He, he's, and he was so touched by all this. See, he had like two different girlfriends who had been sexually assaulted before. And as he was intimate with them, it angered him because as the women he loved had to go through such trauma with overcoming what they've experienced that he was led to create it is I, the, the Rape Foundation in Santa Monica. He is on the board of directors of the Rape Foundation. So all the money that you saw he made from friends, he took a good portion of it and donated it and created a rape center for people to go to to get help, a physical help, a, a, a medical help, psychological help. So there are so many men out there who are seeing that there needs to be change. And there are great men out there who are helping women and men move forward to re reclaim back their power. It is a great thing to do. Uh, there is 
another tip, and it is to be honest with yourself. Now, in order to not attract any of the same type of violators and vile people and people with shame and people that have a whole lot of issues with their life, in order not to attract that anymore and actually create a new path for yourself, you actually have to be honest with yourself. So as you are honest with yourself, that reflection of being honest will start to attract other caring, honest people in your life. For me, uh, I tried to pretend that, oh, everything that happened with eight, I can get through it and I'll be able to be fine. No, I had to really investigate it. And this is just for me. Everyone's story is different. I had to investigate it and figure out what could I do in order to heal myself on a deeper level. So if the things I did remember, I wouldn't allow them to to stifle me. And I had to be honest with myself. And see, how I recognize I had to be honest with myself is each time I would lie to myself and placing myself in a situation where I thought I would be fine. Like, for example, simple things like going online and, and putting yourself on a profile and everything else like that. Oh, that felt so uncomfortable. And I had to recognize I don't feel comfortable doing this. I'm going to listen to myself. I'm going to be honest with myself and do what feels comfortable for me. When I recognize that life is about being honest with how you feel in certain situations, that's when you start changing the course of your life and start attracting situations that are healthy for you. And that takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. But hello, you have a long life in front of you. Each single day, you have the opportunity to be honest with yourself. So that's what I highly encourage you to do. And the last tip is this. Start focus on the healing relationships with men and women in your life. You know, so for so many years, if you've been in a situation where you have been uh, abused or if you have been uh, uh, accused, either way, you've been focusing on the wrong people all this time. You've been focusing on people who could hurt you instead of the people who could encourage you and heal, help heal you. You've been having all your eyes on the glass being half empty instead of half full. You've been looking so much for all the people who could possibly violate you or, or your standards or your situation or not be honest with you that you have forgotten to see the great men and women who are already out there. <laughs> you see, and I just want to share this with you. For so many people who were placing themselves in the shoes of, of the... Uh, Dr. Ford and, and Judge Brett Kavanaugh, for all the people that were reliving it, there were all there's an equal amount of people that were looking at it and thinking, I really wish and I really hope to see people being healed and people recognizing that there are good men out there. There are good women out there. There are great people out there who are honest and who believe in integrity who believe in great things. And as we refocus our time on that, on those individuals who, no one's perfect, not no one's perfect, but the people who honestly, every single day, get up to try and make a difference that is inclusive of all people, not just one group of people, not just men, not just women, but just humanity. When we focus on individuals who are bringing forth a strength to this world, that, my friends, is the steps on removing shame and healing from any type of sexual encounter that was not approved of. Oh, I hope you have thoroughly enjoyed this show of Answers Unleashed. I, I'm i honored to give this podcast. I'm honored to share information with you every single week on Answers Unleashed. Thank you for tuning in live on Facebook. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in on YouTube. Thank you so much. You can always find us. At, you can find this show and other shows here on kpcradio.com. This is a free, great program provided by the 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 college here uh, Pierce College 
You can always find more podcasts on AnswersUnleashed.com slash podcast. Check out our TV show. If you go to AnswersUnleashed.com slash TV show. And you can check out the book there too at AnswersUnleashed slash books. If you want to message me, find me on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Olympia LaPointe. And uh, you can always call in and ask your questions at 888-88-ANSWERS. And so you can ask questions and you never know, we may answer it on the air. But if there's one thing I want to leave you with is this. When you watch the news, when you watch people go through allegations, when you watch people recount their time of sexual assault, I want you to stop for a second. And I want you to recognize your life isn't theirs. You have your own life. And I want you to recognize the power that you live in your own life and the decisions that you can make on a daily basis to be the man or woman of integrity that you're designed to be. I am Olympia LaPointe here with you on Answers Unleashed, your host, and I'll see you next time.